back to the 15 Minute Fantasy Writer. I am author, educator, and writing coach Autumn Bird, as well as the creator of the Am Writing Fantasy blog. And fellow authors, today I want to talk to you about something very important, something not many people talk to you about, and that is your book cover. Now, many of you take your book cover very seriously. I've heard a few rail about how readers shouldn't judge a book by a cover, but and actually, let's start with that. Because the fact is, readers do judge a book, your book, by its cover. So what is your cover saying about your book? So it is true, readers will judge your book by its cover. Love it or hate it, it really is the truth. I say embrace it. Your book cover is your number one marketing image. So do your utmost to make it effective, memorable, and attractive to the type of reader who will love your book. You do want to focus on the people who love your story, not just everyone who might pick up the book and then end up hating it. This is targeted marketing, and this is really important. It's how you end up with those good reviews and good sales. So there are five main components to a book cover. There is, of course, the image, and the title, the author, series, and your tagline if you have it. And of course you could have more things like awards or your author info like if you're a best-selling author, but these are the five core ones that'll probably end up on every book, well at least if you're fantasy and you're writing in a series or related, and the tagline that's kind of important for Amazon. But let's look at what we're gonna talk about today and that is going to be one of those things that is in four of the components, and that is fonts. Because I admit it, I'm a font addict. I go onto a site like Defont or a thousand free fonts just for one perfect font for a new project. And over an hour later, I've downloaded 20 um, new fonts for a dozen potential projects that, or maybe just because they look really cool and I know I'll use them sometime. And I haven't even gotten back to what I went on there for. The project is still sitting there unfinished. Oops. So you don't have to be a font addict, though, to appreciate fonts or to at least take them seriously in your book cover. And of course, I'll be happy to show you why. So marketing is all about controlling the perceptions of a consumer, both the conscious and subconscious ones. The subliminal clues hidden in marketing images are fascinating and another whole side interest of mine. So a marketing image like your book cover is full of information and you really have to be careful what you're putting in there because what are you telling readers about your book and are you sure you're telling them the right things? Some of the clues you provide the reader with your cover are things such as your genre, themes that might go through your book, like love, romance, fighting, the setting, you know, you might have a clue of those different world, a city, dragons, what kind of image is in the background? You can even tell the level of excitement or tension from some book covers. Sometimes you get a glimpse of main characters, or you can get a feel for the overall tone of the novel, like is it a sunny one, dark, is it hopeful? You can get that just from the cover. And you can actually tell a lot about a book's quality, or at least you think you can, just by the cover. So on top of all that other information that's there directly, like your author name, tagline, and series. So how do the fonts used in your cover tie into this? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. There's a few key issues that come with the fonts. The first is legibility. Can you even read what is written there? Certain fonts also imply a genre, believe it or not. And yes, font choices can imply quality too. And that's not counting little things like placement, color, and size. We'll get to those in future episodes because, well, come on, I only have 15 minutes and fonts are really important. Let's go ahead and start and look at legibility. Now, this is not so much size that I'm talking about, but that is an important aspect since some fonts look great at full size, really big images, 
and they're completely unreadable at a small size. So it's definitely something you need to take into consideration and look at both big and large. But really, you want to look at are the letters clear and readable, you know, against the background. So can you see them against whatever that image is, as well as the typeface? You know, can you tell what the letter is? And like I mentioned, these are really actually good and important issues. But we'll talk about those along with some of the color and ways of differentiating it from the background in another episode, because we're going to move on and talk about how fonts can imply a genre. The marketing we've experienced since childhood, since we saw our first image, has stereotyped expectations on content and tone. We can tell from fonts if there's a targeting for excitement, if you're looking at gender, you know, is this targeting to a male or a female? And you can talk about genre just with your font choice. Using the wrong fonts will create confusion or doubt in a reader. So that might actually cause them to skip your book. When I say fonts, look at these. These are a bunch of different fonts written in kind of the genre that they have the feel for. So we have dystopian, fantasy, sci-fi, romance, contemporary romance, steampunk, dark fantasy. Some of these are really actually getting down all the way to subgenres, all told with just by using a certain font. Do you see what I mean here? You get the feel. I think it makes a big impact if you use the wrong type of font. When you're looking at your book, you can tell the reader the totally the wrong thing about what your book is about. So using a font that fits the genre is especially important if your cover image does not strongly convey the genre. So what do you think of these three covers? Can you tell the genre? Does the font help you or hinder you? Believe it or not, all three covers were found under Epic Fantasy. What a title is can provide a lot of clues, like the one that's named The Dragon's Blade. You kind of already guess that that one's fantasy. But the name, but name The Wind and Where the Forest Ends, those are really open-ended titles. They could be a story in any genre. And neither cover is super strong fantasy. I mean, in the one, there's sort of a dark robed figure, but I didn't see him at first. So it didn't stick out to me. I just saw the tree in the sky. I wasn't really sure what it was, but the font in Name the Wind kind of provides a suggestion of fantasy or at least something historic. But where the forest ends, I'm guessing if I just had that cover and couldn't read that tiny tagline, I'm guessing childhood escape to maybe a contemporary romance or mystery. I don't really have any clues to tell me where this one is from. So think about that. And by the way, I'm not picking on anyone else's book or saying that these are not great books or they're possibly wonderful. I'm sure they're written very well, but I'm looking at covers and picking them though. So if this was one of your books, um, you know, consider what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe take a suggestion. I really want to help every author succeed. So how about this one? This is a new, a different cover. How much information does the title on this font of the cover tell you? This is a great example of an epic fantasy image. It's just a sword that uses a gritty dystopian-ish font with the name Brutal to create a cover that promises darkness which works amazingly well for a book that if you can read that tagline, it's billed as epic grimdark fantasy. So he is actually kind of building in layers here. He takes an image that is epic fantasy, and we'll talk more about image stereotypes and later. And then he takes a font that is used more for dystopian novels to create a kind of dark fantasy title and feel, all just by font choice and image choice. And I also mentioned fonts imply quality. So what do I mean by that? Well, using a standard font, like one of those ones that just comes with Photoshop or even in the Canva book um, editor creator that you can go online and use, it really can say the author didn't take time to build a great product. They just used something that was free. They slapped it on there. They didn't really spend the time to build something special. 
And if they didn't take the time to build something special on the cover, maybe there's nothing special in the book. However, if you use one or more fonts to create a unique title, that can comply that the author took a lot of attention to detail. They really cared not only about the cover, so how they might care about the story and the plot. And it can also say this is something exciting and new because not everyone is using this font. You want to stand out because you want your story to stand out and be mem memorable. So let's look at an example. What do the fonts and covers say to you about the quality of these two books? And again, they're both from Epic Fantasy, but which one would you pick up first with just that quick flash when you see them? Does one make you feel more confident in the story or the author? Think about that. How do you want readers to feel when they look at your book cover? And guess what? You may think they have to because covers can be expensive, but fonts don't have to be expensive. There are a lot of places to pick up awesome free fonts. I mentioned them before, a few of them. The font, a thousand free fonts. Squ font Squirrel is a fun one. Google it. There's a lot of fonts. Just go ahead and take a peek, look and see what's out there. And you can often search by genre or feel when you jump onto those websites, type in fantasy fonts and see what comes up. You're going to hit something that's going to be right for the genre. Do be careful though on some of these sites. They are sometimes clickbait and it'll say download here and you're downloading not the font but a program you really don't need or want on your computer. So be super careful. Don't go on them unless you have some experience downloading files. And also when you download them, they often come with a little PDF that says, read me, uh, read it. They will tell you if there's any use restrictions that it's only for personal use or commercial use and do follow what the creator asked because you wouldn't want someone to download your book and use portions of it um, without your permission. So the good news too is if you have a Mac, loading fonts is easy, 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 way too easy. I won't show you how, but you basically click on it and add it into your font editor. It's awesome. When I discovered that, that's that was the day I became a font addict. So be warned, you might just find this a little too much fun. So that is it for this 15 minute fantasy writer. Of course, there is a lot more to covers and setting your title off than this. So I'll be back with more cover essentials soon. Don't forget to check out the Am Writing Fantasy website for more great tips. And I'll link to a recent post there that it is on covers in the show notes. So follow the YouTube channel to get notices when a new video is released and the blog for writing updates. And let me know your thoughts on fonts in the comments. Are you a font addict too?